Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 41 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. <clears throat> But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is this is a lesson. Lesson 41 is a follow on to lesson number 40. Now, in lesson number 40, I showed you how to connect the MPU 6050 six axis IMU system up to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And I showed you how to measure acceleration in the X axis and measure acceleration in the Y axis. What your homework assignment was, was to activate the Z axis and then measure acceleration in the Z axis. You were first, you were supposed to first predict how you would think that Z axis accelerometer was going to behave. And then you were to turn it on and see if the result was what you anticipated. If it was not, then you were you were supposed to explain why the Z axis was not behaving like the X and the Y. How many of you guys were successful? Was the Z axis behaving as you expected or was it behaving differently? If it was behaving differently, were you able to figure out what was going on? I hope to see you guys post, uh, post your thoughts on this. Okay, but enough of this introductory discussion. Let's jump over and kind of jump in where we left off on lesson number 40. Let me move over out of your way. Okay, remember in lesson number 40, I showed you how to hook up the MPU 6050. I said, let's go ahead and hook up the OLED uh, 1306 because we'll probably be using that in future lessons and get this circuit hooked up. Now, if you want that schematic so you can catch up with us, if you didn't do this last week, you can go to the most Excellent www.toptechboy.com. You can use this happy little search icon to search on something like schematic for tilt meter. You'll get this. If you click on this, you'll get a close up of showing you how we hooked up the MPU 6050 and the 1306 to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Also, I have the code here that we ended up with last week. And so you want to go ahead and grab that. So we're starting with the code that we had last last week. And so with that, we can come over and we end up here in Thonny. And I've gone ahead and I've gotten that code. This is where we ended up with last week. And then just for good measure to make sure that the universe is in proper order, let's run this and see if it does what we expect it to. OK, we're measuring acceleration in X. We're measuring acceleration in Y. And since we're sitting here not moving, we're measuring very close to zero Gs. But if I come and I move it, accelerate it along the Y axis, I'm seeing Y acceleration in orange or X acceleration in blue. <clears throat> And so that is pretty much how we expect it to be. And if it's sitting there not moving and not accelerating, we measure what? We measure zero Gs. And so that is pretty good. Let's come over here. And I guess you didn't see me move it, but take my word for it. I was accelerating in the X and Y as we were talking. Now let's come down and it's a simple enough thing. Let's measure Z, Z acceleration. <clears throat> and that's equal to mpu.excel.z like that. And now we'll print it out down here on this line. And that way it'll show up as well in the, in the serial, uh, serial plotter. So let's plot <clears throat> Z acceleration. And then we'll put the label G on it <clears throat> like that. Okay. 
and that looks pretty good. Now let's run it. So this is not moving in X, it's not moving in Y, it's not moving in Z. So we would expect what for acceleration? Zero G, zero G, zero G. But let's run this and let's see what happens. Okay, very interesting. An unexpected result. So let me come over here to this view and you can see it's sitting still and the X at the X and the Y are measuring zero, but what are we measuring? We're measuring one G of acceleration along the Z axis. One G of acceleration along the Z axis. Why is that? This isn't moving, it's not accelerating. Why am I measuring an acceleration of one G? Well, that's interesting. Let me come here and let me play with this a little bit. Now watch the green. That's your Z. Z is the one that's misbehaving. It's measuring when it shouldn't. <clears throat> but I want you to watch. And as I tilt to 90 degrees, what happens? Look at that. I fixed it. Z is working very well now. Z is working just fine. But what's the problem now? Now X is misbehaving. Well, let me put it back down. Z is misbehaving and X is behaving well. Well, what if I turn it up like this? Now, what is happening? Now, Y is misbehaving and X and Z are behaving properly. So what is going on? What is going on? Well, right here, <clears throat> we have Z misbehaving. So remember how we have those plates suspended by a spring? We have those plates suspended by a spring. What is different between X and Y and Z? Okay, this is the Y axis plate. This is the X axis plate. And this is, this is the Z axis plate. What's different? X, Y, and Z. What's different in Z? In Z, I have a force, an acceleration force of 1G pressing this proof mass down. While it's just sitting there, it is experiencing 1G of acceleration, which is pulling the proof mass down. X does not have that or X does not have that. Y does not have that. It's the Z axis that is experiencing 1G. <clears throat> but now what if I rotate it and I put Z up like that? Now it doesn't have 1G on it. And if I do that, you see now the 1G is acting on the X accelerometer. Or if I put it like this now, the 1G is acting on the Y accelerometer. So what you have to see is, even though I'm sitting here in my Aaron chair in my office, I'm pulling 1G in the Z axis. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> I think you can see it pretty clear here. I think you can see it pretty clear here in the, uh, in the data. And then also what I want you to see is, this is what I want you to see. Okay, yeah, I can get acceleration in Y. I can get acceleration in X. And now let's try to get acceleration in Z. Okay, yeah, you see I'm getting acceleration in Z on top of the, on top of the 1G. I'm getting acceleration there. Okay, so this I think is sort of behaving like we would expect if we just remember there is a 1G gravitational vector coming down and that's why we're not floating around the room. That's why we are firmly affixed to the floor because we are experiencing 1G of acceleration <clears throat> towards the center of the Earth, okay? So that is kind of neat. <clears throat> but now I want you to watch something. Okay, the blue curve, the blue curve is the X accelerometer. The blue curve is the X accelerometer. Now, I want you to watch that blue curve as I tilt. 
what does it do? It goes from 0 to 1. <clears throat> what if I tilt the other way? It goes from 0 to minus 1. Okay. What if I tilt this way? Y goes from 0 to minus 1. What if I tilt this way? Y goes from 0 to 1. <clears throat> and then the other two are well behaved. Okay, do you see that? Now, what do you see is one interesting thing I might be able to do with three accelerometers. I might be able to what? Measure tilt. Yes, you could use this to see did I get in a head-on collision. You could also see did I flip my car upside down, right? That's a pretty clear signal if you flipped your car upside down or not. Did you hit a car? But what else? Could we maybe see what tilt are we at? Where would you want to measure tilt? Well, if you're a carpenter looking for an angle, trying to level something, a tilt meter would be useful. If you're an off-roader and you have some really awesome off-road four-wheel drive vehicle and you want to see what tilt like what incline you're on, that would be very useful. If you're in an airplane and you want to know your pitch or your roll, <clears throat> that would be very useful. So what we want to do now, and this is your homework, you see that the signal is there. Okay, Qualitatively, you see the signals there, but your homework is to use this setup and to actually quantitatively measure the tilt. Now we're going to call this pitch and we're going to call this roll and what your homework assignment is is to quantitatively measure and determine and calculate the actual tilt and roll based on the data that is coming off of this sensor. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a little hint. There's the easy way and the hard way. And the hard way is to just brute force it and go in and have for 0 to 90 degrees like 90 if statements and then come in and calibrate the thing. That would be the hard way. That would be the stupid way to do it. Or who's your friend? Math is your friend. Now, do you find it curious or a coincident that very recently I taught you two math lessons? It could be that the key to this homework assignment is going back and thinking about that math you learned, drawing a little picture, and then coming up with an equation. <laughs> okay, guys, <clears throat> this was kind of a quick lesson, but I really, I really want you guys to understand this stuff. I taught you the math. I taught you how the accelerometer works, and now I'm asking you to do something useful. Now, I saw some of you guys just ran out and grabbed libraries to do that, and that's fine, but I hope some of you guys will go in and actually think about the problem, write some equations, and then actually solve it. Okay, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. OK, and I really want to take a second and give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. YouTube is really sort of moving channels like this channels with real significant content and long, long format videos. That's like the old way. And they want to they want to go the new way, which is little 15 minute silly clips, little 15 seconds, 15 second shorts. OK, and so really I am not performing well on YouTube and it is you guys that are coming along and helping me on Patreon. It's you that are keeping these videos uh, going. It's you that's sort of keeping me in the game here. Also, you can help me if you give me a thumbs up. Leaving a comment down below will help me. If you've not already, subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.